Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm here at the Four States Farm Show in Pittsburgh, Kansas. I love these kind of shows, love looking at all the equipment. I didn't even know about this, though, until last night. Luckily, it's only 40 minutes from my house, so here I am. It's been raining this morning, but it's supposed to stop, so I'm going to take a look around, see what we can find. So at these farm shows, I've been picking a different tractor manufacturer each time and interviewing a salesman, kind of getting their take on the features and benefits of that brand. And I actually wanted to interview a Bobcat dealership. And I drove by the dealership the other day and was shocked that they had completely sold out of tractors. Come to find out, they hadn't. All the tractors had been moved to the farm show. I couldn't tell you if they make a better tractor or not, but something about the look of them is just appealing to me. I think it's the white, but like most things that are white, it'd be a brown tractor in a hurry. But I'm really wanting to do some comparisons between larger compact tractors and small skid steers to see which one would be the logical next step up for me to make it more productive. I kind of feel like if I keep my tractor, adding a skid steer would be the next upgrade, but on the other hand, I might just trade my tractor in for a bigger one. Really, the only way to know on something like that is to drive them. So I've got a couple opportunities set up where I'm going to do some test drives on skid steers and larger tractors and actually do some work with them and see what I think. So that's the main reason I'm here, to compare the bigger equipment and look at attachments and maybe find some attachments that I hadn't seen before. But I really was surprised at this show that when I went inside the building to the smaller booths, I found a product that I think is just fantastic. And I got to interview not just a salesman, but the actual man who invented it. So definitely worth seeing. All right, I'm here at a Bobcat dealership. I've got Tanner that's gonna tell us a little bit about these compact tractors. Then I'm gonna look at the skid loaders and even a mini excavator. Kind of do the pros and cons of the, the different ones if I was looking to upgrade. These look like some pretty nice machines, so you wanna show us a little bit of the features and what kind of tractor we have here, and then we'll go look at the bigger one. All right, well right here we got the CT2540, uh, 40 horsepower tractor. And just kind of on the first thing I'd like to touch on is uh, how accessible our hood is. All it is is one pull and pops up. Compared to some of the competitors, you have to take off side shields to get to the engine. Uh, and as far as your daily checks, you got your oil filter right here, fuel filter, and oil checkpoint all on the same side. Uh, with your battery and an engine air filter are easily accessible. And then another thing on this side of the machine, you got your bucket level. So with this pin being right on the top, it's showing you that the bucket's gonna be level. And then on the front, we got our skid steer style, if you wanna point it out here. Our skid steer style quick, quick attach. And that just allows for easy bucket on and off. Now another thing we like to touch on is how easy it is to get the loader on and off. As all you gotta do is put down this, this leg here and then sit, sit the bucket down and yep. you'll feel it. Um, you'll feel it start to really pressure off this pin. Pull the pin out and it rolls right off and then disconnect your hydraulics. You wanna take a look in the cab? Yeah, these cabs are really nice. It's spacious. This is a 40 horsepower tractor, which uh, I've got a 38, and we don't have a factory cab option on mine. Now, the 3 Series in the same horsepower does have that factory cab. But, yeah, this is a really roomy cab. It's got a 3-speed transmission in it as opposed to mine's a 2-speed. This is heated and air-conditioned. It's got an optional radio, the windshield wiper, all glass, great visibility. The loader joystick is one like on the 3E's that goes to the floor. Like I said, it's a big improvement that it's got the 3-speed transmission. Seems like a pretty nice machine, comfortable. It's got a tilt wheel on it. So, looking at the rear, we've got our 540 PTO. 
comes standard on all our tractors. And then right here, this is kind of our special feature. Uh, this allows you to go up and down from the PTO from the rear. And I that, really like that feature. Honestly. That really just stops you from going back and forth to the tractor. Uh, on and off, on and off. This makes the hookup a lot easier. Yeah, and so I think that's really neat. They've also got the telescoping draft links down here for the, for the lift arms and for the stabilizer arms. And that, to me, is a really nice feature to be able to pull the pin instead of trying to work a little wrench in there. It's got a heavy-duty draw bar. The cap for the PTO is a screw-on so that it, you're not going to lose it, doesn't get any dust or anything inside of it. Fuel fill is right back here on the back of the tractor, which is a convenient location as opposed to how they used to put them on the hood and stuff like that. So, they've got a small toolbox here. I find all tractors, compact tractors, have very limited tool storage, but it is they do have one, you know, and some don't have one at all. And then again, your transmission check, another easy accessible location. Nobody thinks about it when they're buying, but how easy to service it is, is a big deal, really. It is, you know, and that isn't what a lot of people look at them as, but, you know, as you casually start every day having to check it, it starts eating up 20, 30 minutes of your day, so. Yep, and yeah. prices change all the time, but with a cab on it, this is pretty well priced. He's, I think he said it was around 33000 Yep. So, anyway, it's, it's a nice machine. Want to go look at a bigger one? Yep. All right, so this tractor, to me, looks about like the other one, but um, what's the horsepower on this one? 55. So 55? 15 more than the 2540. And this is the biggest compact tractor that Bobcat has? Yep. This is where we're at right now. So, you, are there any major differences we should point out between this one and the other one? Or is it just the big brother? A lot of light, just bigger. Alright, this is really roomy. Um, now that one over there has the brake pedal on the right side, which is different. But this feels like the same twin pedal configuration I'm used to. The brake on this side. So I can't get over how much room there is up here. So, a lot of switches that I don't know what they all do. The throttle here. I said all of these are available with a factory installed third function, but for the most part they don't come just standard on it. All right, well before I head over to the next spot and look at these skid steers, I want to tell them uh, where you're from. Uh, Tanner Snow, I'm a tractor and mower, zero turn mower salesman in Olathe. So give me a call and get you hooked up. They've got a lot of cool equipment here for sure. Yeah. So thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, so this is a Bobcat T595. It's actually kind of the older setup or more of the economy setup as far as the Bobcat skid steers. I think it would be most comparable to a John Deere 325 because those are both 74 horsepower machines. Obviously a skid steer has some clear benefits over a tractor even in the same horsepower range and that is hydraulic flow pushing power it's obviously better for grading you can get more heavy duty attachments they typically have higher lift capacity but on the downside you're looking at the price of attachments so if i want to do a wide variety of tasks like i do with the tractor then each of those implements, for instance, if I want a brush hog, you can get a really nice heavy duty brush hog for a skid steer, but it's in a different price category than a brush hog for a tractor. And with all the attachments I have, that begins to add up pretty quick. So ideally, I'd keep the compact tractor for tilling gardens and that sort of thing and then have a skid steer for some of the bigger projects but when you're talking about machines in the 30 40 50 60 thousand dollar range saying well wouldn't it be handy just to have two is you know kind of a tough pill to swallow but it also feels pretty limiting to me i know that some farmers do their whole operation with just a skid steer but I feel like I'd miss having a PTO, honestly. So, it just comes down to the kind of work you're doing. 
and as a forklift there's no question that the skid steer would be better. Once I log a little more seat time in a skid steer and on a larger tractor I should have a stronger opinion on that. I think it's really cool on these skid steers, at least this one, that you've got two different ways you can control the skid steer. One is more of a zero turn style between the two levers and the other version has all of the movement on one joystick and then your loader control on the other. And it's kind of neat that you can choose between those. I talked to the sales guys at the Bobcat booth for probably an hour, but only put a few minutes of it on camera, so I guess we'll move along for now, but I'll have more to say about these comparisons as we go along. All right, so these look like a huge upgrade in augers from the PTO driven auger that I've got because you've got downforce, down pressure from the loader, then you've got hydraulic flow. I believe that these have a forward and reverse. I'm going to look into that a little bit more. But uh, of course, more capability, you get more price. This is $3,300, whereas mine was like three or $400. But definitely seems like a more capable machine if you're digging a lot of holes. The big limitation I find with the PTO drive is when you hit a rock and you're stuck, there's no reverse. You got to disassemble it and turn it back with a pipe wrench and not a lot of fun. Most of these I see are always for skid steers, but this one is on a tractor the size of mine. So that's intriguing to me. Um, I think I've got 5.3 gallons per minute of hydraulic flow. So I'll have to see what the flow requirements on this are. As I walked up towards this Kwanzaa hut, I was like, hey, I'll go talk to the guys I bought my Kwanzaa hut from at the Tulsa Farm Show. And it's a different company selling the same kind of building. So, I did get a chance to look at them again. And hopefully what they tell you is true about the higher wind rating and, and the strength of those buildings. They told me we were about eight weeks out on delivery and... That was probably four weeks ago, so shouldn't be long now. I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to tillage and row cropping equipment, so these gentlemen here were nice enough to give me a quick explanation of their products. How are you today, sir? How are you today? Oh, oh pretty good. A row cleaner's job is like for, you know, corn stalks, you know, old dirt clods, etc. from last year. Row cleaner is gonna basically sweep the residue away so it's a clear path for the gauge wheels and the opener. Then you've got the closing, yes, we manufacture this, and then we manufacture different closing systems. You know, basically, so it's actually the planter's putting the seed in the ground here, so then you, you've got to close the trench behind the planter. So that's what this does here, is you know, manufacture to close the trench behind the planter. Now we made our way over to the first of the two John Deere setups they had, and I was immediately drawn to this mower here because it's different. I think it's probably set up for golf courses or larger commercial properties and if you look real close right there on the deck it says no step. Didn't notice that till after I stepped on it. But you know after I did notice that I realized there's really no other step so I don't know how you're supposed to get up on it. Now we're back to what I know a little bit about and that's the John Deere compact tractors. I understand the model numbers, I understand the price ranges and what the differences in features are, but it's really hard for me to make comparisons. Like we just spent some time over at that Bobcat dealership and those Bobcat tractors had some features I really did think were cool, but I don't know what to compare it to because it's a 40 horsepower tractor and it had features that aren't available on my 38 horsepower. But it's also got bigger wheels and tires and it's more expensive. But if you compared it to this 3E, it's got a lot of features. If you compare it to a 3R, then it's kind of lacking as far as the ergonomics and the design on it. So anytime you cross brands, 
it's hard to make a decision on what model to compare it to. Just like I was saying a minute ago, if you compare that to a 3E, then it's an expensive tractor. If you compare it to the 3R, then it's, you know, pretty well priced. Here I'm on a 5E tractor, and I gave those a little bit of thought, but I really don't think that's going to be the fit for me. They've got more raw power. Now this one's just a 55 horse, but the ones I was looking at were the 50, 75, 50, 90, and 50, 100 E. And those have the raw horsepower to get some bigger jobs done. They've got the lifting capacity, but it's not going to behave the way my compact does. It's not going to fit in small spaces, and it's not going to have a hydrostatic transmission on it. So it's, it's just a different type of machine, and I don't think it's what I'm looking for. Now you'll see I'm up on a 4044M. And at first, I thought this was the heavy duty, but this is actually the regular M. It's the mid range of the trim packages on the John Deere compacts. Then I went over to the Heritage Tractor booth, and they actually did have a 4M heavy duty, which still isn't like my 2R because the R package gives you more ergonomic setups on the cab and the controls but what you do get with the heavy duty is exactly what it sounds like if you look at the front tires as I walk up to this they're quite a bit wider and it's also got the skid steer quick attach so that you can use your existing skid steer attachments if you have them and it's also got a lower ROPS when it's folded and it's got standard hydraulic auxiliary ports on the rear and just a few other features like that and it's got a higher lift capacity so this is the most direct comparison I see of a larger compact tractor to a skid steer. Truth be told everyone has a good time I think giving each other a hard time about John Deere versus Kubota and all the other brands you can throw in there. You know, Coyotes got a good fan base of people who really like their tractors. They've got a high lift capacity on them. You'll see Branson and TYM and Bobcat and all these different manufacturers. And the truth is, I think they all make a good machine. It's really about, you know, choosing a dealer that you're going to feel comfortable with when you need something, parts or service or anything like that. And then you're choosing a set of features and a price range. Because any of these manufacturers can put more features on them. It just ups the price. So you might say, well, I love this manufacturer because they have extra hydraulics. Well, it's in the price. So those are just my thoughts on it. Here you see a... Deer skid steer, that's a $65,000 machine. Now, I think those bobcats over there were in the $50,000 range, but I also think on the exact one I'm talking about, it did not come with your backup cameras, and um, they could add them, but it's just an additional cost. So, same thing I was saying about the tractors. When you talk about price, you have to say, are you looking at an economy model like the John Deere 3E or a more feature-rich tractor like a 3R? Once I went inside, there's a lot of products in here that might be great products and good for, you know, traditional farmers, but they don't really apply to me. And then there was, you know, knickknacks and that sort of thing, so... I was really just buzzing up and down these aisles till I saw a mower deck standing on edge with spinning blades on it and thought I gotta see what this is about. Now some of the audio might be hard to pick up what we're saying here as we talk about this but I was really impressed with this product. My intention is to get some for my mowers and probably for the mower deck on the tractor and put them to the test and give you guys a full review of what I think about it in some upcoming videos. But anyway, let's get to it. 
Alright, so I was just stopped and looked at your mower blades. I've got a 636 M John Deere stand on and then a 652. So my deck size is a 36 and 52. They're commercial mowers. And I'm just wondering if something like this would work on my mower. Absolutely. Take off your bar blades, put this on with the same hardware, the same bolt. These blades are eight times harder than what your bar blades are allowed to be because they are forgiving. If you hit something, they are forgiving. So they're a high carbon spring steel, they're rock to 45, they run smoother, it's a plywood pattern, and it shoves all the grass through each one of them, so it's like a ninja blender of grass clippings. Your discharge is going to be 30 to 50 percent farther, smaller pieces, even where it floats in the air. Huh. Let me make sure I'm on here. Yeah, we're both in there. Yeah, so, um... This is impressive with the hammer because I'll tell you the truth, I don't do a great job of going through and picking up everything before I mow. Exactly. And so that right there almost sells the product, really. So I wonder why, uh, so why doesn't John Deere and uh, Toro, why don't they put well, something like this on there? We've met with several you know, companies about these. The problem that we have with them is we last too long. Bar blades are made to sell parts. Yeah. Whether if you hit something, you're gonna it goes up to your your spindles, your bearings, even a gearbox. When we hit something, again, it's forgiving. You just keep on going. But it's soft metal. Under ANSI standards, they'll spin a bar blade at 200 miles an hour and they'll put a iron bar up into it. That blade has to come to that iron bar and it has to bend out of the way. That's the safety commission. So this is the All right. We, through the same test, we pivot out of the way. Simple. So with having 12 cutting tips, we create a vortex that better discharge, just keeps a cleaner deck, stays sharper longer. Do you think that works well still with the mulching decks? Um, I like to have an open deck. And literally, if you have a closed mulching deck, like in the spring, like I say, this is a mulching system without closed, it'd be like taking a hunk of grass, throwing it in your blender on your counter. I will turn it to liquid. So that's why you want to discharge quickly and leave it. Now it's wonderful for doing leaves. One pass, you'll take out four to six inches of leaves down to dust. That's a big deal. Big. So I do a little bit of commercial mowing, not like full time, but I do it for other people. And I don't like discharge because you're either throwing it at someone's house or you're throwing it, but you're basically saying that that's not going to be much of an issue. But one of my mowers has electronic mulch on demand, so I can do it either way. But, um, if you do it short you're not going to throw as much out the side, is what you're saying. Well, short term, you can close it off. But this will have 30 to 50 percent farther discharge, smaller pieces. Oh, okay. So it's, it's mulching with an open deck. But if you are going by a mulch bed, definitely you can close it down for a short term. This then, makes me think, sorry to interrupt you, this makes me think it's not going to throw a big rock as likely to throw a big rock. That's why they love them in Missouri, because it will not throw a rock. On our face Facebook page, you will see where a young man at an early age, his best friend was killed, and it's a sad story, by a rock. And he would never do any mowing because of that. He now owns Megmos because it will not grow a rock. It takes the energy out of it, it will roll out, but it won't kill somebody. Um, in Missouri, they love these because every time it rains in Missouri, it grows a new rock. They're constantly hitting rock. Rock Hill for Rock Hill. And it's named because because the whole property, 20 acres, or I half of it, is just right rock. Now. It's rock. Yeah. So, yep. yep. No, we're familiar with that. Uh, That's and funny. so your product on the oh, first uh, company yeah. is yeah. So Megmo. And that's Megmo. The name of yeah. It. And um, I was 35 years old, working for my father-in-law, the farmer, when he and I invented these together, basically by accident. Oh, well, congratulations! Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so I, I make my living selling a product that I manufacture and came up with. And so I have a lot of for that. Yeah. I assumed you were a salesman and not the guy, so that's very cool. Right, well, you know, I helped him invent them and I was working for him. I learned a lot. I started my own business, you know, full line landscaping. I have 800 lawn care customers, fertilization, weed control, mowing, you know, we do ponds, everything. So this has been a God 
guys and for many, many, you know, basically landscapers, yeah. professionals, because it saves time, labor, money. So this is on a hard shoulder bowl. I'm, I'm standing here because everyone's going to be skeptical before they spend money on something. I'm trying to think of what the problem is with it. What's that? Now, I, I, I don't really see yeah, it. Yeah, so the bolts are... You may have to replace the spring every once in a while. Well, that's, 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 that's just for the for demo. Oh. Yeah. You know, Normally this the speed <laughs> slings them back out. Centripetal force. You know, a lot of people ask me about how do you sharpen them. You know, because you don't need those expensive machines anymore. Take them off. Just like this. Lay them flat on the bench. And, and just like touch them up with a flap sanding disc 120, it creates no heat, so it will not lose its temper. Yep, so, that, so that's I mean, how you, you do it, really just really rotate it to the next one, do the same thing, and I always do the top, I always do one time across the bottom, and do the face one time, because that will take that razor blade sharpness. If you don't do it, they can chip, you know, and that's even with bar blades. And then just put it right back up, put it in. As long as they visually all look the same, it's balanced, because this is your balancer. This flywheel will also save you between 5 and 10 percent on your fuel consumption, and you'll get more power. You only need right. You guys, um, so you so, probably sell um, off your website and ship to people. That's yep, your main yep, something yep. business model. Yep. So the website is megmo.com or sales at megmo.com. All right. Or you can so call, just, call up and ask for Mark, and I'll be glad to talk to you. So, so I've never used it, but I don't ever talk about something I don't believe yeah, in, and so this looks pretty darn cool. So, yeah, so hey, thanks for your time. Yeah, appreciate right it. Thank you. I tell you what. Mower technology just keeps advancing like everything else, I guess. And I'm just amazed by some of the mowers I see at these booths. The Spartan mowers, I mean, I couldn't tell you if they're better than another brand or not, but they've got some cool features. And these are also just really cool-looking mowers. Feels like about the only thing missing is a missile launcher on the side of it. Looks almost like a tank. Now... I'm a big fan of the stand-on mowers, and they've got a monster of a stand-on mower here that has a couple features I haven't seen in person before, and that's the removable seat off the back. And it seems counterintuitive to have a seat on a stand-up mower, but the thing is, you're sitting at a much different angle, and you don't use it all the time. It also has some heavy suspension on the front casters, which is something I hadn't really seen before. Alright, so if it seems like I'm negative towards Kubota, that's absolutely not true. I bet they make a great tractor. Um, I just don't know that much about them, and every time I come to the farm show, all the salesmen are tied up talking to other people, so that's probably a compliment to the brand that there's that much activity at the booth. There's a nice little 2650 here cab tractor for 27,000 that looked like a pretty good deal to me. Hopefully at an upcoming show or maybe just walking into the dealership, I'll be able to get a better look at these. I could really spend all day at these farm shows just walking around talking to people, but this is already getting to be a pretty long video, so I guess I ought to wrap it up. But I hope you enjoyed the video and in just a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.